The year is 1999, and the Wachowskis have dropped a huge film in our lap. Did we appreciate it back in 1999? I knew that we were in awe of it, for sure. And that is The Matrix, starring Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, Lawrence Fishburne, and Hugo Reeving, just to name a few. Keanu Reeves is now a bona fide action star with films like the Matrix franchise, as well as, you know, John Wick. He has the awesome 94 film Speed, which is a big podcast favorite for us. Uh, but at this point in time, with 1999, Keanu Reeves, at least to my knowledge, wasn't that big bona fide action star that we know and love and appreciate him for today. But The Matrix was probably a lightning in a bottle. It's this fun sci-fi film uh, talking about the two different lives that we do live and going into this thing called The Matrix. And we're wondering what, what these guys in their suits and their black sunglasses, these this cool leather-cladded characters, uh, what are these agents fault chasing these people? And what truly is The Matrix? This is... Uh, uh, very uh, trippy film, and I do remember watching this when it first came out in 1999. I didn't quite see this one in theaters uh, back then, but I have seen it in theaters now. I went to see it in the theaters this last weekend, and man, what a what a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal experience that was. But the Matrix franchise has had four entries up to this point. One that went straight to like HBO Max. I don't recall if the Matrix Resurrections went to the theater or how long it was actually out there. I know I did stream it on HBO Max in 2021. Uh, I wasn't a terribly huge fan. I might have to pay that one a revisit. The other films in the franchise, Revolutions and Reloaded, while still fun action movies, really kind of became convoluted to me and it really kind of expanded this film and made it less interesting with some big real like some action pieces that just seemed overplayed now i think they do have a following now and so i will be paying them a revisit however this first iconic film the matrix was something that was played quite frequently in my household as a kid so it has a big kind of in it's ingrained itself in my movie loving uh, life make sure you guys like share and subscribe and share your guys's uh, thoughts and opinions on the matrix down in the comments section down below and let's have a good lively conversation about the matrix let's dive into that synopsis set in the 22nd century the matrix tells the story of a computer hacker who joins a group of underground insurgents fighting the vast and powerful computers who now rule the earth now, I haven't watched The Matrix in a very long time, and this is definitely my first time watching it since I lost my dad several years ago. Uh, so I did walk in with those nostalgic goggles on, and I don't mind doing that for this movie because it did play such a prominent role in my young life. We watched it quite a bit, and as a family, we used to watch a lot of movies, so kind of... Uh, each one of us would pick some of our favorite movies and we would kind of put them on throughout the years. And my dad would always go to two, The Princess Bride and The Matrix. Now I finally get to, like, I finally get to talk about the second part of his favorite films of all time. I did do The Princess Bride several years ago as well after I we did lose him. Uh, but now I get to talk about The Matrix. And uh, The Matrix is something that he really was, uh, like, really enjoyed. He, obviously, the big, giant set pieces, the action that it did bring, and that was something, that, one of his favorite genres, was kind of action movies. He showed me the Rambo f movies and Schwarzenegger films and Stallone, of course. But The Matrix was something that he kind of watched. It was something different. It wasn't these big, brooding characters. It was a computer hacker who got sucked into this world. He took the red pill, not the blue pill, uh, and he went down the rabbit hole and he got jacked into the matrix. He learned like one of his favorite segments was like, I know Kung Fu and that whole like learning how to do the choreographed Kung Fu stuff was fantastic. And Keanu Reeves at this point too had only really done speed that I had seen up to this point. And I didn't really know him as this big giant action star. So he was relatively an unknown. He was just a guy that I saw in speed and I really loved that movie as well. But it wasn't quite diehard to me because those were my two big action movies that I had seen at least at that time frame, uh, up to that point. So as a 10-year-old a kid, uh, those were my big, uh, other than like Star Wars and Indiana Jones, of course, those were my big action films at that time. So Matrix was something completely different. And seeing this kind of, this underground world where there was these definitely insurgent characters trying to, you know, 
take down the system and uh, fight for something greater and uh, and unplugging people. It was something a new novel concept that the Wachowskis was putting in front of my eyes. And seeing Keanu Reeves kind of be the leading man was pretty awesome. And seeing this new kind of way of filmmaking with this, you know, bullet time uh, scenes was something like mind blowing experiences for me. From the very first time you saw Trinity come up and take down the cops in that opening scene, that was just like, holy cow! And they're jumping across rooftops. Like, how are they doing this? How are they filming this too? Now, at this point, I wasn't really thinking about the filmmaking aspects, but of course, we owned the DVD, so I, I played this movie was played quite a bit in our house. So we did go through the uh, the deleted scenes and the special features of the movie, and we saw how they filmed the bullet time sequences. And it was some really entertaining and some like like mind boggling ways of looking at film in a different way. And I, again, this is way early before I really started appreciating film as like an art form. And it was uh, kind of mesmerizing to kind of think about the last couple of days before I sat down and recorded this review here. Just think about like maybe this is when I first started like thinking about like there's something more to this uh, than just kind of just these stories that I'm watching on the screen. There's more to the process of making these movies. And again, I always say too, like Apollo 13 and Star Wars Empire Strikes Back were the two movies that at a time that like I watched them on, kind of on repeat and I appreciated like the art of filmmaking and storytelling. But The Matrix was there's something different to it. And again, like watching it now, there is definitely a, like a really cool factor to this. Like it, it was cool, like wearing leather. And I remember at a time I did have the leather jacket phase too. Um, I didn't pull it off nearly as cool as like a Morpheus or <laughs> or Trinity or even uh, Neo for that matter. But uh, it was really cool to see uh, like that leather cladded characters and just doing amazing like gung gung fu with them and it's like the early stages of gung fu obviously now it's very prominent in movies like john wick and they're even replicating stuff in like the, our the latest movie that came out this last week monkey man so uh, it's very fun to go see these uh going back and revisiting stuff and seeing where like this gung fu style of filmmaking really took off and again connor reeves and some of the filmmakers of the matrix also went over and took their talents to Films like John Wick, and uh, but seeing where this really kicked off was awesome. And we have to talk about some of our villains here too. Uh, Hugo Weaving, the leader of the agents. Uh, this is where we really saw this uh, like maniacal figure here, and becoming one of the arguably probably twenty top twenty five villains of all time. Uh, we saw him a couple times throughout the sequels as well. But Agent Smith was a very menacing foe that you just wanted to see Neo kick the crap out of. So seeing him get his corruptions at the end of the movie uh, was this uh, crowd-pleasing moment. Um, again, going back to that bullet time, seeing a lot of these fight sequences with you know Neo fighting the agents and Morpheus and dodging bullets and stopping the bullets too uh, was something that was just like very fascinating and entertaining. Now I don't like I said I don't consider this one of my personal favorite action movies of all time. I I do hold that to maybe like a Die Hard and something I've watched a lot more. And The Matrix has been one of my father's like like I said father's favorite movie that he did play quite a bit. And maybe it overstayed my welcome. And also I think the sequels have something to do that which maybe I should revisit those once and kind of give them their due as well. And watching those so many years later, maybe my opinions would have changed on the sequels. Uh, but The Matrix is just like a bona fide, like classic movie. And I think on our website, on the site, was, I had this at three stars. I think I should just, out of respect, bump it up another like half a star. It should be like three and a half. Uh, it's a very lived in world and seeing like Keanu Reeves interacting with characters like Trinity and, and Carrie Ann Moss. Again, in this one was one of my first times ever seeing her in a uh, film and she was just like stunning and like mysterious and you just couldn't take your eyes off that character and seeing Lawrence Fishburne and again one of my first films ever seeing him in a film seeing him that's just like this very mysterious character as well uh recruiting this really kind of like deadbeat type of uh, slacker character at least that's what it played off the first couple times I watched it uh, Neo but he was just he's just a technically Neo is just a guy like trying to want to see what's more out there and trying to 
curious about the things and doing maybe stuff illegally <laughs> with all the his hacking prowess but at the same time he's digging in wanting to know what the matrix is and seeing him kind of get recruited by morpheus so it's, it's fun to see uh the the characters building off each other and interacting with one another and uh, with morpheus and neo here and lawrence fishburne and keanu reeves had that great chemistry to pull off some really awesome things here we have to talk about some of the other side characters here one specifically i want to make i mention it is joe pantoli pantaleone uh played cypher here uh i had this is one of the few actors i had seen before and i was how many classic babies stay out? He was one of the guys stealing the baby. So seeing him in this completely other despicable character uh, was awesome to see here. And watching this movie back, he is by far one of the more interesting characters in the entire movie. And I really want to see like if we ever got a Cypher spinoff, I, th I would be on board with that. Uh, maybe like a little graphic novel rather to see what Cypher was like before he took the blue pill. And why, or the red pill, it's like, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Cypher's fan, uh, like an awesome, like another little lackey, kind of a villain character as well. But he was so fascinating this time of watching. Maybe that's just by the portrayal of uh, Joe, <laughs> I'm going to butcher this again, uh, Pantaleone, Pantale, I, I, I'm not going to try again. I have, I've ruined it, my bad. Uh, but seeing him in this film was awesome. Uh, and, um, another awesome uh, 90s classic uh, action movies, the bad boys, but he is by far, far superior in the Matrix as Cipher. You get this like this twisted character, and then learning what deja vu was. It's like they, they he sold his team out to the agents, and they changed something, and then his team was like brutally murdered when they didn't even like they weren't even in the real world. Air quotes, real world. They were in this Matrix computer generated world. Uh, yeah, it's just like it's thinking about that. It's like, man, that's 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 rough, especially when you get guys like um, characters like Switch, Belinda McGlory's character of Switch, and you, she's like, oh, not like this. Like, I don't want to die like this in this place. Like, if I was gonna die, I want to die in in my actual body, not this my like computer generated AI body here. Like, that's that's her look at Switch there in that moment when she realized like. Apoc had died right in front of them and uh she her fate was like going to be just as worse there as well it's like that's a devastating moment for those that character and luckily our heroes did make it out of that that scene but it, it's it's just really fun to go back and revisit this movie and this is another one i'm ashamed to say i don't have on my personal movie collection and i think the sequels do have something to do with that it's uh, these big action movies that do have multiple entries in their franchises and i just choose not to own the entire series because i don't want to see i don't want to rewatch some of the the lesser outings of the franchise and maybe i'm really being harsh on these sequels to the matrix because i consider them the lesser outings after i haven't really given them a chance since i really diving in more into film and i definitely feel like this watch makes me want to go back and watch movies i didn't want to ever watch again and so i think there's that so i i will at some point be you know what i should probably at some point you know dive into those matrix movies and maybe even pop on some reviews as well but the matrix here is just uh the wakowski's doing something that i don't i can't really picture any other director really doing at that time or directors doing at that time again you know i'm only 10 at this time when i first watched it and i will never claim to be the most you know wealth of knowledge when it comes to like directors and their filmmaking styles so that i'm very novice at that um, but at that time frame like there's only so many directors that could be able to pull off this movie i feel like and they definitely have to be super creative so I'm glad the Wachowskis were able to deliver this really creative movie that definitely spawned several years, a couple decades at this point now, and about five movies if we're counting the Animatrix. And we also have to think about the couple, multiple video games that they had spawned as well. And yeah, there's a lot to this Matrix universe. And I think that if the Matrix Resurrections was a hit, we would see probably more entries into it. Don't sure it really got the, you know, the 
reward that the filmmakers were wanting it to to kind of spin off to multiple more new movies who knows uh, maybe this one was a film that was perfectly for the 90s and early 2000s and not really cared about today because it's a property we've already seen and it's kind of failed at the same time so there's that as well but that's my quick thoughts takes and opinions on the matrix i'm really glad i was able to watch this so uh, go watch some anniversary movies and let me know in the comments section down below what you guys thought about the matrix and you go see it in theaters this last week let me know in the comments section down below until next time my name is adam subscribe